um, which you can view or you can pass on to your colleagues. Alrighty, I'm going to hand it over to Clay now so you can listen to him instead of me. There you go, Clay. Thanks very much, Warren, and welcome everybody. Glad you could take the time out to uh, join us in today's webinar. As Warren said, um, today's um, webinar we're focusing on some of the new features uh, that we've added into um, MicroCAD V6. So we know everybody's been using uh, MicroCAD Home Dive for quite a while, so you pretty much know how to use it. What we'll also do, we'll just do a little bit of a brief um, overview on some of the features that you already know, but this is just to uh, sort of catch you up on what we've got there. Now, what you're looking at at the moment is what's called the landing page. Now, before we get to this, the standard procedure for opening up MicroCAD V6 is to double click on the icon on your desktop and then you'll be presented with a screen where you have a choice of whether or not you can use the local database or the remote database. And that's what we're using today. We're using the, uh, the internet or the live version of uh, MicroCAD V6 there. But that's where all the up-to-date and the latest information is held in there. So you have those two choices and as I said today, we're concentrating on the uh, remote database or the live database in there. Once you enter your username and password in there, this is where you end up. This is called the landing page and on the left hand side we have our news bulletins and on the right hand side will be the application. As you can see there, I've got quite a few being the trainer. Now let's just have a look at the left hand side of the screen here um, with the news icon. As you can see there, that we've got our latest um, spiel there on MicroCAD V6 for Hyundai and it's basically telling you of all the new features that we've put in there. So it's always a good idea to have a little bit of a look on the news column over here on the left hand side before you click on the start button and just see what we've added in um, for that particular um, news item that we have in there. Obviously once you've had enough of reading there, click on the start button and you're into the product and I'll just flick over to that fairly quickly for you so you can see it. So straight away <coughs> there's a couple of new features that fall on a new look to MicroCAD V6 there. You'll notice up the top we've got our uh, numbers across here, our identify vehicles, select parts, orders and the library in there. you also notice a few other things. Um, you'll notice that the actual graphic icons are a lot crisper and clearer now uh, within the, uh, the actual vehicle identification page that we're looking at here. Now, I'm just going to take you through a quick scenario just so you know, uh, just a little refresher on how it works. So I'm going to identify a vehicle, I'm going to select um, I will search for a part and I'll use the graphic index in this case and then I'll just select the part and add it to the order list. So to start with, I'm just going to enter the full 17 character VIN into this field up the top here. There it is there, it's one I had earlier. MicroCAD will identify that vehicle for me, bringing back all the major attributes as we can see there. Just over here on the right hand side, we'll use the graphic and we'll go to the body on this one. Once we've clicked there, we're into our major, oh, sorry, minor graphic index. I'll just go to the hood on this one, one click on that, and we're into the image. In a couple of seconds there, it'll catch up with you, and one click on the call out for the part that I require, so the 66400 there. Part data window will appear on your screen, and from here it's just a matter of clicking the order button, and that will send that off to the orders for us. Now you'll notice the color change in the call out, that's just a visual indicator telling you that that part is on your order list. Order list is up here under number three at the top of the screen. One click on that and you'll be taken straight to your order list. And there we can see the part in the vehicle that we're working on, description of the part, part number and of course the price there. So let me clear that list for you by just clicking the clear button at the bottom of the screen there. Just answer yes to that, that'll clear the order list and I'm going to go straight back to number one to identify vehicle up here at the top. Okay. Basic quick overview of, of how MicroCAD works there. Identify the vehicle, search for your part, add it to your order list, done. Nice, simple and easy using the graphic index there. All right, so <coughs> we can identify a vehicle by using the full 17 character VIN there. Now we can also use the last eight characters of the VIN. So by just typing those in and clicking the search button, MicroCAD will identify that vehicle, this time using the last eight of the VIN. So you can use your full 17, your last eight. You can also use registration numbers as well uh, in that particular field to identify the vehicle there as well. Just remember the registration numbers, uh, 
that's the registration number at the time of sale of the vehicle. So that if the customer changes um, his uh, uh, registration plate to a personal plate, uh, then obviously that's not going to work in there. So you, you need to use the VIN number in that case. All right, so we've identified the vehicle there. You can see, as I've said there before, we've got our major attributes. Also the general tab gives us things like the colour and other information on this vehicle. And we've also got the option codes tab here that will give us even more information uh, within this uh, catalogue that we've currently got loaded in there. Now just remember as well, customer tag. We've had a few uh, phone calls and emails on customer tags um, just asking whether or not or how to do it and how to set it up. So we'll just do a quick revision on that. Now you can set a customer tag to a vehicle once it has been identified. So you need to identify the vehicle for the first time and then you're free to set your customer tag down the bottom of the screen here. Now that can be the registration number of the vehicle, like a personal plate. Uh, it could be a fleet code of a vehicle, person's name, for example, or just put in uh, somebody's name in here, that'll do. Put in Bill, click the Save button. You'll get a message come up saying that tag has been saved, and it's just a matter of clicking the OK button on that one, and that tag's been saved. Now, to bring your tags back, go back to Identify Vehicle. Now, one of the things we have here, and again, I've had a few questions on this, if you forget the customer tag, or if you want to know where they're all, they all are, just need to click on this icon or button located right here. So one click on that, and this is where all your customer tags will be in the customer tag window here. You can have as many customer tags as you like in there. Um, once you fill up that particular form, a scroll bar will appear so you can scroll through them. To load a vehicle from here, it's just a matter of clicking on it, and then clicking the load button, and Microcat will load that vehicle for you. So that's a quick and easy way of identifying the vehicle <coughs> within there. Now once the vehicle is loaded, of course at the top of the screen here you've got your summary bar. So this is going to follow us through when we're searching for parts. So if you need to have a quick look at um, uh, what that particular vehicle is, you've got the summary bar across the top here that will always be with us on that one there. Alright, notes. Let's talk about notes. There's been a bit of a change on the notes and you'll notice uh, Straight away on this screen, we've got quite a few different buttons and icons on here now. Now you'll notice that the, all the note buttons and that have now moved up here, and the note button is this one here. So I'll just rest my mouse on it. Obviously here we have our print and email buttons as well on the left hand side, so you can email and print the vehicle information that you have here. But let's talk about notes. So to add a note to this particular VIN, you can add a VIN note or a catalog note at this point where we are now. So one click on this icon, and you'll notice that the note window will appear. Now that's got a different look to it now as well. It's like one of those yellow sticky notes. Now when you move your mouse in here, you've got an option to set a VIN note, or if you click on this drop-down arrow here, you can also set a catalogue note. Now I've already set a catalogue note, so I'm going to set a VIN note to this one. And remembering with a VIN note, it is for this particular vehicle that we have loaded underneath this VIN number here. Right, so a VIN note is for this vehicle here that we're actually identified. So you can type in anything there um, that you like. We'll just say, um, well, we'll say uh, 22 inch wheels fitted to this one. Why not? I've seen bigger. Now once you've typed the note in there, it's just a matter of clicking this little tick here. And you'll see when you rest your mouse on it, it'll say save um, for you there. So one click and that note has been saved. Now you'll notice that the note doesn't go away, it stays here on the screen. Okay, that gives you a quick opportunity to click the information icon here, which will give you more details on that note that we've just done. So there's the text and who it was by there. You have the opportunity here to delete this note if you wish as well. Or you can just click the tick and then to close it, just hit the X here at the top on the right hand side and that note will disappear. Now what you'll notice over here with the vehicle, the notes appear in the same spot. Now when I rest my mouse on it, you can see we get a quick snapshot of what that note is all about, in this case 22 inch wheel spitted. If I move my mouse to the left to the other note, which is a catalog note, you can see there um, that that particular one I've put on is a rear spoiler available for this vehicle as well. Now, so these are your new notes that we can see here now. Now remembering with notes, right, Everybody in your dealership that uses Microcat can see these notes. So in other words, 
uh, uh, probably a good way of describing it is that your dealership is in, under a internet umbrella and everybody in there that's using Microtag can see everybody else's notes, whether it's a VIN note, catalog note, section note, call out note, um, any note that you put in there is shared amongst everybody in the dealership using Microtag. Now, obviously if you're in a big dealership you're going to have a lot of notes. So you need something to maintain those notes. So what we've added into Microcat, a brand new feature, is the note maintenance feature. Now it's available up the top here in the right hand corner under this gear icon that you can see here. So see this little gear icon now? Alright, one click on it and you'll get a drop down. Okay, now there's note maintenance, so one click on that and the note maintenance window will appear for you. Okay, now let's have a quick look at this note maintenance window. Currently I'm viewing all notes within Microcat V6. So these are all the notes that are currently on my Microcat V6, in other words my little dealership that I have here. Now you can filter these notes by clicking on this drop down arrow and if I only want to see the catalog notes I can click on catalog and that will just show me the catalog notes that we have here. Obviously we can also view in notes, section notes, call out notes and part number notes within here or by clicking on the all we can see all the notes. So from here you can actually maintain these notes. I mean in a big dealership you might have a few double ups uh, within there. So all you need to do is just click the X there and delete that double up that you might have and that note will disappear off the screen there. If you want to edit the notes, for example this one that I've just put in here with 22 inch wheels fitted, you just click on the text, that'll open up the note and you'll see that in a couple of seconds and I can edit it here and maybe change it so the customers maybe just put 18 inch wheels in there for example uh, or any type of edit that you want to do there. Once you've edited it, click the save button or cancel if you don't. So you can actually edit them and delete them and view all types of different notes under the note maintenance feature. To close this window, it's just a matter of clicking the X there and that's gone away. Now remember, note maintenance is up here under the gear icon at the top of the screen. One click and you'll see it's the second one down there that we see here now. So a great new feature in Microcad there to, to the ability to actually maintain or edit those notes right across the leadership. Alright, again, and I'll keep saying that, they are available for everybody that's using it. So if I put a note on, my partner over there on the other side of the room will be able to see that note as well and vice versa, right across the board. Alright, let me take you back to identify a vehicle by clicking on number one at the top of the screen here now. Again, just a little bit of revision here. You'll see that we've got our vehicle index here with 59 vehicles, quite a few. You can use the filter located here to filter those vehicles down. For example, if I was after an I-40, just type in I-40 and there you are. You'll come down to the one vehicle selection. If you want to get all the vehicles back, just hit your backspace key a few times and that will return all the vehicles for you that you see there. Again, uh, one of the main features that we have here, which is a fantastic feature with Microcad, is the ability to do a part number or PNC search cross catalog. Um, the good scenario here, obviously, and we get this every time at the dealership, is the customer will ring up and say, mate, I've got this part number. Um, can you tell me what it is, how much it costs, what vehicles it fits? Usual phone call you get every now and then. So from the front screen here, we can change our search criteria to part number and then type in the part number that the customer gives us. Here's one that I created a little bit earlier. So type in the part number from the customer, click the search button, and Microcat will return all the vehicles that that part number is in. So we can see we've only got a few there and it's just a matter of clicking on the vehicle um, and that will take you into that particular vehicle, bring back your search results. So straight away, and, I, and you guys probably already knew it was an oil filter right, so for that one. <laughs> so it gives you the part number, the description of it and also the price on that particular oil filter that we have here now. So cross catalog part or PNC search available here right at the front of the screen, a great little tool to use in Microcad. Now we also have quick navigation, again I've gotten a few emails and phone calls on this, a uh, few people not quite understanding what can be done here. So resting on the little information icon where I've got my mouse at the moment actually lets you know what you can type into this particular field. 
So for example, um, you could type uh, the last eight of the VIN and a PNC in there to get to identify that vehicle and take you to that particular part using the PNC. Now to do that, you need to put in a dot. Now that dot's just signifying to microcat, you're ready to go. Then type in the uh, last eight of the VIN. You can type the full VIN in if you like, but last eight's probably a little bit easier for us. And I'll just type that one in there. Now you need to put a dot in because you're asking microcat to identify the vehicle and what are we doing next? Well, we're going to search for a PNC, so I'll type that into there as well. Once that's done, click the search button. Microcat will identify that vehicle for us, as we can see in the summary bar across the top here, and bring back the search result for that PNC, so it's showing me the part number and the panel, uh, the description of the part as well, and also the price. So this is a pretty cool tool up here. Now once you're in the catalogue that you've identified here, you can actually do a section search, for example, section 60, just type 60 in and hit your enter key. As soon as you do that, Microcat will bring back all the sections with 60 in it, and as we know, 60 is pretty much all the panels in there. Again, just highlight that function up there, type in 20, for example, that's going to take us to the cylinder head and engine parts in there as well. So once you're in the catalogue, you can do section searching directly there in the quick navigation uh, section up there as well to do that. So nice and easy way to do it. All right. What I might do now is, uh, just at this point in the webinar, is I'll hand it back to Warren and um, see if there are any questions on what we've just covered. And I think we might run the first poll, Warren. Great. Thanks, Clay. Yeah, so everyone, just a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, just click on that raise hand icon and I can unmute you. Otherwise, you can put a question in the little question box and click on send and we can uh, deal with that question that way. So um, go ahead, anyone, if you've got a, a question. In the meantime, what I'll do is launch a, a poll over the top of Clay's screen there. So we just have a quick uh, question for you to answer here. So if you wanted to access that new notes maintenance feature within MarketCat Live, how will you, sorry, MarketCat V6, how will you do that? Will you click on the note icon? Will you click on the gear icon? you right click on a catalog note or double click on a part number note. So you can see I've got about 60% of you have answered so far, which would be the way if you wanted to access the note maintenance feature, if you wanted to maintain any of your notes, if you wanted to edit or delete or just view all of the notes that are in the system, how would you access that, which method? All right, we've got enough of you voted there now. Let's close off that poll and take a look at the results. Okay, so the majority of you have said uh, click on the gear icon and that is the correct answer. Um, some of you have also answered on the click the note icon. So you might think that you can access note maintenance through the note icon but actually the note icon is actually just going to bring up um, the note that's been entered or enable you to enter a new note. So I might get Clay to just quickly uh, show that when it goes back to his screen. So there's Everyone is very clear on that. And uh, just a reminder, if anyone's got any questions, please raise your hand or type something into the question box. Clay, maybe you can just show us up there on that gear icon to access the note maintenance feature again. Sure. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everybody, for voting in those polls. Breaks up the webinar a little bit. All right, so note maintenance is available up the top of the screen here under the gear icon. As you see right there, I'll just sort of run my mouse around it a bit. One click on that gear icon, you'll get a drop down and note maintenance is the second one down there that we can see and by selecting that, that'll open up the note maintenance window which will appear on your screen in a couple of seconds. And this is obviously where you can edit your notes, delete your notes um, and view all notes, catalogue notes, everything. Just remember you've got a little drop down here so you can actually um, select what you want to look at, whether it's catalogue, bin, section, call out or part number, or all notes as I have selected here at the moment that we can see. Alright, so note maintenance under the gear feature here. Alright, let's move on and let's have a look at uh, some path searching. Now one of um, where we're actually going to show you during the course of this webinar, we've uh, reincorporated some keyboard shortcuts um, to help you get through a little bit quicker now on MicroCAD. But before we get to that, a quick way to get back to the graphic index. Now, I know everybody knows this little button here, which is the go back a level button, and that will take you back every time you click it, 
one level at a time until you get back to the graphic index. A little shortcut here to get back straight away is just as you see up here this blue highlight. This is the current vehicle I'm in, the I-20. If I just click on that, don't worry about the drop down that appears, but just click on that and that will take you straight back to the graphic index without having to use that back button uh, and go back one level at a time. So one quick click on that I-20 that I've currently got loaded. Again, don't worry about the drop down, just click on I-20 and that will take you straight back to the graphic index that you see there now. All right, let's have a look at path searching. Now, <clears throat> obviously we all know that up here is where we enter our, uh, uh, what we're searching for, whether it's a description, PNC, section number, and so on. Remembering here, I've currently got description uh, selected, but by using the drop-down arrow there, you can search by part number, PNC, section, or even super session if you wish. Currently, we're gonna do a description search. Now, to do that, you just type in the word, whatever you're after, and we'll just say uh, hood on this one. So I'll just type twit in, click the search button, and microcat will bring back a list of results uh, for that particular single word search that I put in. You can see over here, we've got a little counter, and we've also got a counter here telling me that there are 17 results. Not too many to search for um, in there uh, to look at, um, but I can just select one there if I wish. But another way, uh, I'm abused towards quite a bit in all my webinars, so let's try something different. Let's go to pump, for example. Type in pump, and this time I've, I've done a single word search for pump, and I've got 19 results back. Now, you can use the filter over here, which I'm sure you all know about, but we'll just do a little revision on it. My main search was for pump. This time I'm going to type in, well, what type of pump? It's an oil pump, coolant pump. We'll say it's a coolant pump, and I'm just going to start to type the word coolant. And as I do that, you'll see that the actual results are less. I've got two there, um, so that's all right. I've got the pump and the pulley there that I can select if I want both of those. To get all your results back, simply hit the backspace key a few times and maybe select something else. But you can also do a multiple word search. So I can do pump and then say assembly, or the abbreviation for assembly followed by coolant. Once that's done, I can just hit my enter key here, so I have to click on the search button all the time, and Microcat's going to bring us back just for one result. So you've got an option here of doing a single word search or a multiple word search, right, to bring those results back. Also, we can do PNC searching, as we know in here. So it's just a matter of putting in your PNC, and they tell me that all you high-end spare parts people know your PNC off the top of your head, so this is a great feature for you. Type in your PNC, click search or hit your enter key, and Microcat brings back that one result. Obviously, we're getting the one result because of the vehicle that we have loaded here. Now, one of the other features that we've got in here is the ability to do multiple PNC searching. You can type up to 10 PNCs into this particular field. Now, you see here, I've just clicked on a little drop down here, and this is my history list for PNCs and sections that I've been putting in. And you'll notice here that I've got quite a long string of PNCs. So to enter these, it's just a matter of typing in your PNC, followed by a space, next PNC, space, and so on, up to 10. When you've done that, click the search button, and Microcap will bring back one path number for each of those PNCs. Want to order, if you want to order them all in one hit, click on this particular checkbox, which is right at the top, one click, all those are ordered, and from here, I can just transfer them straight to my bill management system. That's quick and simple. If you want to uncheck them, just simply uncheck that top box, and that will uncheck all of those for you that you can see there. So multiple PNCs, fantastic feature in Microcat V6. All right, up to 10 PNCs that you can put into that. So anywhere from one to 10, you can put 10 in there. Now, 10 PNCs is pretty good for like a front end uh, smash or rear end smash. You can type them in pretty quickly and get them up on your order list and ready to go. So a nice one to do. Now remembering, once you've brought all those back, if you wish to view a particular part at any time, just click on the camera icon right next to the part that you wish to view. One click, and that will take you to the image and bring up the part data window for that particular part that you've selected um, off those search results there. As soon as that happens, you'll see the path data window here with all the information on that particular part number. Again, the quantity field is highlighted, so maybe the customer wants to put one in stock, so we can put two there. 
and order that particular part if we wanted to within here. Now, super sessions. You'll notice within the part data window, we have this SS, which is super session. Now, if there was something there, that would mean that this particular part is superseded. This one is not, so that's okay. So, another way of looking at super sessions is by looking at the illustrated parts tab down the bottom here. You'll see it's highlighted. One click on that, and all the information for the illustrator, or this illustration that we're looking at at the top of the screen here, all these parts are related to this image. Now, if I just sort of scroll up a little bit here, you'll see that there is an SS column there, and you'll see that there's a super session attached to this particular part here, this uh, nut flange that we're looking at here. If you want to view the super session, simply click on the SS, and that will bring up the super session window with a super session stream. So you can get a chance here to order the early one or maybe the late one, <coughs> depending on what you've got in stock, or it might be just the one-to-one -one where you just uh, need to order the latest one. So that's your super session, and it's available in the data or in the illustrated parts results there. You can also view that by clicking on this button here, which is a split screen view within Microcat. I've just got a catch up there on the screen. So by clicking on this button that I've got my mouse on now, we'll split the screen in Microcat. So again, it's just like bringing it up from the bottom, but you'll see that you've got a little bit less information there. You need to sort of scroll by using the scroll bar at the bottom there across to view the rest of that information. So I actually prefer to bring it up from the bottom of the screen, just like that, which gives me all the information in one hit that I can see there now. To lower this bar, simply click on the little triangle there, or if you want to cheat, just double click on the grey bar here that I've got my mouse on, and that will uh, lower that down for you as well within there. All right, so I'm doing this order on this, um, <coughs> this I-20 that we're working on at the moment. It's a pretty big order I'm working on. There's a lot of technical stuff. I've got a front-end smash there. I need some brackets. I need some relays. It's, it's going to take a little while, but obviously in a dealership environment, the phones are still ringing. Um, you've got to pick it up, and I really don't want to have to save this order, right, and then bring it back after I've answered that phone call. So the new one of the new features that we've introduced into V6 is this here, which is called the new session button. So currently I'm in this I20, but I can open another session of Microcat by simply clicking on the new session button. Now that's going to open up a new session that will just take a couple of seconds to load on your screen there. And now I'm into that. So I'm working on the I-20. I've picked up the phone. Customer just wants a price on a, on a particular part on the car. So I'll just click on it, click on one of these and just run you through it quickly. It might be something for the body, so I'll quickly go into the graphic index there. And maybe just after a price on the uh, on the or good hinge. Click on that. Part data window appears. Give the customer the price. He goes, thanks, Clay, no worries, I'll get back to you on that. Just close that. Now to get back to my I-20. All I need to do, and if you look at the top of the screen here, you'll see that I've got my other session open. It's just a matter of closing that session, just like that, and I'm back to my I-20. Pretty quick, pretty simple, and easy. Now, you can open up as many sessions as you like, uh, as much as your PC or laptop can handle. Obviously, the more you open, um, you know, obviously it's, it's going to, uh, well, not hurt your PC, but it might slow it up a little bit. But in a real dealership, sort of environment there, I'd say two to three um, sessions you can have open so that if you're working on a really big order, just like this one here, um, that I'm working on with this I-20 and I need to pick up the phone, I can just open a new session, deal with that customer and then get rid of that and out pretty quickly and pretty straight away. So again, as many new sessions as you'd like to open there as, as many as you'd like. What I might do now is take it back to Warren and he can run the next poll and see if there are any questions on what I've just shown you. Thanks, Warren. Thanks, Clay. No problems at all. I'll just uh, go straight into that poll while that's starting up. I'll just check to see if anyone uh, has any questions. Please, if you do, just click on the raise hand icon or enter your question into the question panel and click send. Be nice to get a real question from one of you, so please don't be shy. All right, the poll that we've got here is about the maximum number of PNCs that can be entered when you're performing a multiple PNC search. Is it five, ten, 
15 or 20 PNCs that can be entered at one time when you're doing a multiple PNC search. Please select an option and click on Submit. And then we'll close that off in a moment and have a look at the results. All right, let's have a quick look at that. And there we go, everyone's uh, selected 10 PNCs as the maximum number and that is definitely our recommended uh, number of multiple PNCs that you would enter. Excellent, everyone, that's perfect. How are you going there, Clay? Not good to go, what? All right, so uh, we do, I think there's a one question here, so I'll just hide this poll, there's no problems with that. Right, fairly uh, interesting question I've got here for you, Clay. Uh, is there any way we can change how to find uh, the drive belts within the catalog, as in show them all in the one image instead of scattered? Is there any way we can ch change how to find the drive belts within the catalog, as in show them all in the one image instead of being scattered? <clears throat> well, yep, you can do a description search on, on that one, for example, and just type in belt and do a search on that. And as you can see there, that will bring back all the V-belts uh, or anything that has belt in it right within there. I mean, you could then filter it out, for example, and just say, for example, uh, type in rib. <clears throat> and that will give you all the drive belts or, or that particular belt. Or again, if I backspace that out, Right, and bring it all back, I can access any other type, depending on what it is. Um, seat belts, for example, V belts. V belts is probably the way um, that it is, is the descriptive search that you want to look in there, and that's going to bring them all back for this particular vehicle um, that I've got loaded under the VIN. Now, if I go in without a VIN number, right, then it will bring me back uh, and just select the I-20, for example, without a VIN number. Right, and type in belt, it's obviously going to bring back all other different belts depending on the engine size or, or what we have there under that description. I hope that helps. Okay, Clay, and we've had another question come in obviously from a, a multi-franchise dealer who's saying that uh, the, the new session link um, is only displaying in Hyundai and not another manufacturer. And Kim, yeah, that, that is correct. Um, it's currently in both Hyundai and Kia. And, uh, we will be rolling that feature out, that new session link, across to other franchises. It, uh, I won't, we can't sort of uh, give you a complete answer on when that will be available yet. So it's stay tuned, and it sounds like you must be enjoying it. Yep, that's great. All right, Clay, I think it's uh, time to get back on with the show. Excellent. Thanks, Warren. All right, everybody. Um, again, new session, fantastic feature. You can open up those and, uh, and get on with your day job without... Uh, have to let that phone call go. Pick up that phone. All right, back to the product. Um, I just want to do a quick revision on um, our bread, well, what we call breadcrumbs at the top of the screen here. So as you can see, currently I'm in an I-20, and we've got these blue highlights across the top of the screen. If I rest my mouse on the first one, you'll get a little drop down there, and that's just showing me or telling me what I'm currently looking at. If I go across to the next breadcrumb on the left there, you'll see you'll get a larger drop down. So currently I'm working on the fender and hood panel. Say so I'm doing a smash repair here, or a smash quote. Right. From here, currently in fender and hood, I can go to the roof panel, tailgate panel, front doors, rear doors, anywhere I want to go, just by simply cl clicking on one of these particular sections. That's going to save you going back to the graphic index. Next one across is your major section. So currently I'm in body. Obviously if it's the front end, uh, here it's going to have some electrical issues there with the headlamps, like they're broken. Um, <coughs> so I can quickly click into the major section for electrical here as well. And of course the very first breadcrumb there is just telling me what vehicle I'm currently looking at. But it gives you an opportunity to change vehicles here if you wish as well. Uh, so there the breadcrumb is quite useful tool in Micat to use there. Alright, we're currently looking at this image um, on this i20 and at any time you want to see the information on this vehicle, I know we've got the summary bar across the top here, which is just, as it says, a summary bar. But if you want more details, maybe you need to make a decision between automatic or manual or color code or something like that. All you need to do to view the vehicle details is to click on this icon here. 
So one click on that and that's going to bring out the vehicle information from the left hand side of your screen as you'll see in a couple of seconds, just like that. So from here you can make your decision on uh, what part you're after depending on what the attributes are or what you need to know here. So that's available at any time by simply clicking on this button located here, the vehicle identification or information button. One click again and that's going to get rid of it for you. So you're back to your full image and you're starting to look for the parts you need. Now, a, another fantastic feature <coughs> that we've introduced here is the is being able to adjust the image. Now, over here on the left hand side, we've got all these buttons that we can use to uh, sort of zoom in and zoom out. But what we've done for you is if you just put your mouse anywhere on the image, now pretty much every mouse these days has what I call the hamster wheel or the scroll wheel in the middle of your mouse. So you've got your left mouse button, your right mouse button, and in the middle you've got this hamster wheel, as I call it. Now by just resting my mouse on this image and moving that wheel, it's actually going to increase or decrease the size of the image now. So you don't have to use the slide bar over here on the left hand side anymore. You can just put your mouse in the middle, move it in, or move it out. Now the other part of that is if I move my mouse off the image and over here to the right hand side and use the hamster wheel, it's actually going to move the image up and down. So on the image, zoom in, zoom out, just like that. Off the image, it moves the image up and down. Okay, so that's all on your mouse now, so no longer do you have to click over here. I mean, you can still use this function if you wish, but this is just a little bit of a quicker way to zoom in and zoom out to see what parts you are. Remembering that when we scan the images in, or when the images are put into MicroCAD, they're put in at 100%. So you'll notice that you'll actually get the scroll bar appearing on the right hand side here, which means that there might be some parts down the bottom you can't see. So just use your little hamster wheel or scroll wheel to bring the image in so you can see all the parts, or zoom it back out if you want to have a little bit of a closer look at one of those particular parts in there. All right, so that's a new feature you can use using the hamster wheel or scroll wheel on your mouse. Now again, within here, just remembering that this is the image and behind the image is the data or the part numbers, description, quantities and prices. You can view that in two ways. We had a quick look at it earlier. First way is by splitting the screen and clicking on this button here. One click and you'll have your split screen view. So over on the left hand side, you've got <coughs> all your parts and descriptions related to the image here on the right hand side. Again, the color coding here, remembering everything in green is good or applicable to the vehicle that we have loaded. Now one of the other buttons that you'll notice here is this one on the top right hand corner. Now it says click for more filter options. When I click on that, you'll notice that we now have a show non-applicable. Now by clicking on that checkbox, that's going to bring in the non-applicable parts. And if you look on the left hand side in a second or two, you'll notice that we have red parts appearing over here in the data. So anything in red is not applicable to the vehicle we have loaded. But in some cases, you might want to have a look and see what the change date is on these from the to and from date. And I'll just scroll over so you can see that. So you can bring those particular non-applicable parts in at any time by coming up here and selecting Show Non-Applicable. Now, remember to just uncheck that box right to get all the parts back to normal there that you see. All right, you'll notice also that I've got a note feature here. Um, on this particular section, so this node is attaching itself to that section. And again, remember everybody, nodes are shown dealership wide and to maintain them, your node maintenance is up here under the gear icon at the top of the screen. Alright, to get rid of the split screen, click on the same button and that will hide that half screen and bring you back to your full image. Also remembering that data is available at the bottom of the screen here under illustrated path. One click on that, that'll bring it up from the bottom, right, so that you can see your parts there as well. As I said, I prefer it from the bottom because I get everything in one hit. I can see everything there. All right, let's close that down by clicking on the little arrow here this time to give me my full screen view there. All right, <clears throat> now, we, as I said earlier there, I can add a note to a section, which is this one up here, just by clicking on that. Works the same as a VIN note and a catalogue note, just fill it in, save it, and it's there. Also, you can add it to a call out, just like I've done here. Right, by again, <coughs> to add the note to this particular call out, all you need to do is right click on it and add a call out note, and that will uh, 
work exactly the same way as you can see there. I'll just open that up and you can see that note there. The other thing with these particular notes is you can move them around by just clicking and holding your mouse on it. So you can move it up to wherever you wish to move it and write in your particular note. So add in the note, click the tick, save it, close the note, and that note will then appear next to the PNC that you see there now. You can also add a part number note by using that right click function as well. All right. Another feature that we've got in here with Microtab V6 is the image film strip. Now this is a super quick way right, of getting through Microtab. To access the film strip, it's just a matter of clicking on this icon here. So it's a little star or a little yellow icon up here next to the split screen one. This one here, show all sections in the catalog in a film strip view. One click on that. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the screen in the left hand side that this is highlighted catalog sections. One click on that and that will bring up your film strip view. So what you're seeing here is every single image in this i20 that we've got loaded. Now to navigate through, you can use the scroll bar down the bottom here by just click, hold your mouse button down and then just move through them. You'll notice as I move through them, the highlighted ones, just like this, that we see here, all right, the actual section name and description will come up as you highlight, as you uh, rest your mouse on the ones that you're looking at here. Nice, big and bold, easy to read. Now another way of navigating through this is just use the left and right hand arrow keys on your keyboard. So I'm just going to use the left arrow key and just go through a couple like that, or just go the other way by using the right arrow key. Now the brilliant thing with this film strip view is we also have a filter. So say for example I was after the hood, I just start to type the word in hood. As I do that it will filter it down until I'm left with the two images that the hood is shown in. So we've got our trim here as well as our actual panel itself. So you've got your, your release cable in this one and your fender and that in this one. To bring them all back, simply backspace a few times on your filter and that will bring them all back. So you can type pretty much anything in there, for example, like head in there. That'll bring you the sum of the head and the headlining and everything like that. So great little feature to use. So again, for example, um, I'll type in head again. You'll see that they filter down to I've got all just the images with the head in it. Um, for the cylinder head, if I wanted to look at that, one click, and that will take me to that image. Brings up the data bar at the bottom here. I'll just close that down, and there's your image of your cylinder head where you can start ordering your parts from. To bring it back, simply click on catalog sections down here, or the little icon at the top of the screen here, just like that. Bring up your filter, get rid of it, and start typing in the next thing you want to look for. Okay, it could be radiator, um, hood, fender, relay, sensor, um, airbag, anything you want to type in there, it will filter those sections down and only show you the sections with whatever you've typed in there. So a great little feature called the Film Strip View. And again, it's available for you at the top of the screen here under that button located there. Now, <coughs> Let's talk um, a, a smashed vehicle where you've got a massive order from a panel beater. Okay, and this could be, or body shop as they call them these days, you, this could be maybe a 50 or 60 line order that you're going to start interpreting or start looking up the parts for. Now I'm going to take you back to the graphic index. And again, remember the shortcut for that particular one? Just click on the i20 that you've got loaded here and that'll take you straight back to the graphic index. I'll just get rid of this film strip view by just double clicking on that bar. So we're looking at the graphic index together there. All right, so what we have the ability to do here is create a custom catalog. So this is a major smash. So that means I'm going to be interpreting quite a lot of parts for the body, headlamps, radiator, grill, all those kinds of things that go with a big front end smash or a big order from a panel reader. So instead of searching for parts, adding that to the order list, then going back to the graphic index or using description searching and so on, which takes a lot of time, we can create a custom catalog. Now to do that, firstly we're going to start here at the graphic index and we're going to click on body and go into the minor graphic index for the body. Now when I rest my mouse on one of these, any of these particular um, graphics that we're looking at, you'll notice that there's this little grey star. Now I'm just going to rest my mouse on it. And that's saying add this section to your custom catalog. So I'm going to need parts here, so I'm going to add that into my custom catalog. Fender and front apron, yep, I'm going to need that as well. So I'm going to click on that, right, and anything else that I might need there. If 
from here, I'm just going to go back to the graphic index. Now, I'm only one step in, so I can just click on my go back a level button here, and that will take me straight back to the graphic, and I can select electrical. So in here, I'm going to need the, uh, <coughs> the headlamp, which is where we are now, so I'm going to add that to my custom catalog. I'm going to need the side lamps on that one as well. So you get the point here. What I'm doing is actually selecting the sections that I'm needing to go to to all the parts. Now, once I've done that, I can come up here and click on this film strip icon again. Now, when I come down to the bottom of the screen here now, you'll see that that's changed to custom catalog. Now, I click on that, and what you'll see at the bottom of the screen there is the catalog that I've created. Just give it a couple of seconds to come up. So these are the sections and related sections that I've clicked on to create my custom catalog. So now I can start doing my order. This is where I'm going to start. One click on that, get in here, order my parts, whatever I need uh, for this particular image that we're looking at, go back to custom catalog, move to the next section. One click, right, order the parts that I need in here for this particular one, uh, the subframe and so on that I might need, then come back to custom catalog again and order, enter the next section and so on, depending on how many sections you've got loaded in there. So this is creating your own catalog so you don't have to keep going back and forth, description, search, find, all that kind of stuff. It's all here for you. You've just created your own catalog within a catalog, for example. Now, just to let you know, this is a one-off or one-hit thing. Right? I've created this catalog for this vehicle that I've identified for, uh, for this particular quote that I'm doing. Once I change vehicles, this custom catalog is gone. Okay, and you need to create a new one. So it's only for what you're working on, uh, that particular uh, job that you're working on or the vehicle that you've identified for that particular one. So it's a great tool inside Microcat there to create your own custom catalog to get those parts quicker and a lot more easier in there. All right, if you want to go to your film strip view from here, so you've done this catalog and you still maybe you're not sure you need something else within here, right? To get back to your film strip view, all you need to do is click on where it says custom catalog here on the left hand side. One click on that and it will change back to your film strip view just like that. If you want to go back to your custom catalog, click on it again right, and that will bring you back to your custom catalog that you see there now. All right, so great feature. Obviously to hide it, just double click on the grey line here or just use the little triangle in the right hand corner here to get rid of that for you. All right. A little earlier I was talking about keyboard shortcuts and how we've incorporated some back into Microcat Live for you. Now it's pretty hard for me to show you keyboard shortcuts so I'm going to describe it to you. So this would be a good time to get that pen and paper out to write down exactly what I'm about to tell you. So we're going to search for a hood for example and I'm going to use the PNC for this hood. Now I'm not going to use my mouse, I'm going to use the keyboard. So the first shortcut is the control key on your keyboard, which is in the bottom left hand corner. There's also one on the right hand side, but the bottom left hand one seems more popular. Hold the control key down with one finger and then press F for find. And as I do that, you'll notice, and I'll just move my mouse up so you can see it, that the search for field is highlighted, ready to go. I'm going to type in double six or six six four hundred, I should say. Now from here, I'm going to hit the tab key on my keyboard, T-A-B key. Now when I do that, it's going to go straight across to my search criteria and drop it down. Now it's a PNC I'm after, so I'm just going to use my up and down arrows on my keyboard to go to PNC and then hit my enter key. Hit my enter key again and we're done. There's the result. Do you want to see it? Instead of clicking on it, just hit your enter key again and that's going to take you straight to the image highlight the part that you search for and bring up the part data window. Simple and easy. Want to get rid of the part data window really quickly? Hit the escape key on your keyboard. So one click on the escape, one hit on the escape key on your keyboard will get rid of that part data window for you. Alright, want to do a description search? Control F on your keyboard. Hit the tab key. Use your up and down arrows to hit description. Hit your enter key. Oh sorry, I should have typed in hood first, so let's do that. Right, hit your enter key, that's going to take you to a description or bring back the actual search results for that description search that you put in there. Now I'm using the down arrow on my keyboard because I want to have a look at the latch. So I'll just use my down arrow, come down to latch, then hit my enter key on my keyboard. That's going to again take me to the image, 
highlight like the path that I'm searching for and bring up the path that I'm going to go there for you. So there's a sequence there. Control F, type in either PNC description or whatever, whether it's a section number or um, uh, super session in there, type that in, hit your tab key, then select your search criteria. And let's do that again together. So Control F up there on the, oops, up there, I should say, Control F highlights the search field, this time it is a PNC, hit the tab key on my keyboard, up and down arrow key to select PNC, hit my enter key, hit my enter key, there's my result, it can come up on the screen in a second, hit my enter key again, and there I am at the image. Okay, so when you get that sequence happening pretty quickly, right, it's super quick to get to where you want to go. Okay, so again, control F for fine, Type in PNC description or whatever you want. Hit the tab key on your keyboard. Up and down arrows to select your search criteria. And then hit your enter key a couple of times. That will take you to your search result. Highlight the search you want by using your up and down arrows. Hit your enter key. And you're done on that particular one. So it's a great little one. All right. That's the keyboard shortcut I wanted to talk to you about. Obviously, other ways of uh, ordering parts in MicroCAT, which is pretty easy that we all, all know about. If you want to order a part, one click, part data window comes up. Oops, double clicked on that there. Part data window comes up and then click the order button on that. Another way of doing it is simply rest your mouse on the call out, double click, that part's now on my order list. Another way of doing it and I, is just by using the last do feature, which is hold your mouse in a particular area of the window, Scroll over what you want, release your mouse button, and I'll just scroll over that. And when you release the mouse button, you've got the order button there. One click, all those parts will be on the order list. This particular window that's coming up now is just telling me that I already have this particular part on my order list. Do I want to add another one in? I'll just cancel that because I don't. And that's done there for that. Obviously, from here, I can transfer the parts to my dealer management system by simply clicking the transfer button at the top to transfer it across. All right, what I might do now is hand it back to Warren to run another poll and see if there are any questions there. Warren, thank you. All right, okay, yep, running well, thank you. So just a reminder, if anyone has any questions, please click on the raise hand icon or type your question into the question box and click on send. While I wait to see if there's any questions, I'll go ahead and launch the next poll, the last poll, in fact. So Clay has been showing you there the wonderful new film strip feature. You get a, a selection of images down the bottom for you to navigate through. So if you want to access that, how would you do that within Microcat V6? Is it clicking on the arrow icon, clicking on the minor section image, clicking on the icon with the yellow star, clicking on the vehicle information icon? I can see the votes coming in. Just waiting for a few more of you to provide an answer. Don't be shy, just click on the one you think it is. We won't pull you up for any mistakenly selected options. Alrighty, the majority of you have voted there now. I'll close that off. And let's take a look at the results together. So the majority of you there have all said the icon with the yellow star, 64% in fact, which is the correct answer. The yellow one, sorry, the purple, the purple highlighted one there. And in the application, you're clicking on the yellow star. So the clay might show you uh, the difference in some of those icons when we go back into the product. I'm just having a look for some questions now. Okay, Claire, I've got a specific question for you here. Uh, if Is there any way we can find the vehicle model in detail? So say if he has a an I-30 and wants to find out if it is an active, elite, or a Highlander, would you be able to help answer that question, Clay? <laughs> Sorry, Warren, you cut out a little bit there, right at the important part. Okay, I'll repeat the question. I'm just actually hiding the poll at the same time. 
to go back to your screen. There we go. Okay, so the question is, is there any way we can find the vehicle model in detail? So say if they're in an I-30 and they want to find out if it is um, active, elite or Highlander. So some more specifics on the model. <clears throat> so I'd say more than likely going on that question, it would be under the actual vehicle uh, information panel that we have over here, uh, giving us all the details on that particular vehicle. Um, obviously, what we see here at the moment is <coughs> the, inform excuse me, the information uh, for that particular vehicle that I have loaded. So within general here, uh, we've also got more information. If I scroll down through here, it's going to give me heaps more information, uh, including engine codes, drive types, and so on within here. And again, along with our option codes, uh, which we can scroll through there as well, which will give us more information on that particular vehicle. So I'm pretty sure what uh, the, the answer to this question would, work, would be within these three tabs that they're actually looking at now uh, within here. All right. Thanks. Okay. Yes, uh, that's all the questions. So if you'd just like to recap on those those few icons there, there was just a few people that had chosen one that wasn't sure. quite right. All right. So to access the image film strip, it's this button right here, which is the little uh, icon here with the yellow star. And by clicking on that, that will bring the film strip up coming down here. Currently, I've got my custom catalog still, but I'll just click on that so it will change to the film strip for you. Okay, so to access the film strip, it's this button here. Obviously, the one to the left there, that will take you back one level at a time, or <coughs> actually exactly like here that we see with these highlights. So by clicking this back button, it will take me to there, click it again, it will take me to here, click again, back to here, and if I click it one more time, it will take me back to the identified vehicle there as well. Again, the one to the right of the film strip icon that we have here is the split screen view and the one to the right of that is the vehicle information panel that comes out where we can see the different attributes for that particular vehicle. All right, moving on. We've ordered some parts or put some parts on the order list. The order list is up here under number three at the top of the screen. One click on that and that will bring up our order list with all our parts on it. Uh, again, if you want to delete a part, it's just a matter of clicking on the red X in the far left hand corner. One click on that you'll get a uh, message come up, sure you want to do this. And we'll click yes to that. I don't want that part anymore. I can change the quantities directly from the order list here by simply highlighting the one I want to change and then change the quantity straight away in there. I can add in customer details here, for example, uh, count number of the customer, order number from the customer, for example, and any notes uh, that I want to put in there as well. I can move the parts around. For example, I want the hood to be the very first item on my invoice. It's just a matter of resting your mouse on the particular part you wish to move. Click, hold your uh, mouse button down, just your normal mouse button, the left one, and then move it to wherever you want it to be. And in this case, we'll move it up to the top here, uh, and that will be the first item when I print it out or invoice it out. So you can actually move those parts around at any time. Obviously, um, if we're doing this order, it might be a quote, for example. I can save it by simply clicking the Save button located down the bottom here. One click on that. You'll get a message saying that it has been saved. Just answer OK to that. At any time you want to view any of your saved orders, you can come up to the top of the screen here and click on Saved Orders, and they will be here in your Saved Orders file. Now, Saved orders are also available right across the dealership with anybody using MicroCAD. Now, this is a great feature. You might have a $5,000 order sitting on your saved orders for a particular customer, and you go on holidays. Customer rings and says, oh, you blah, blah there, or bill there, no, mate, it's off for two weeks. Right? Oh, great, I just put an order with him. Can you find it? It's available for you right there on your screen. Anybody can view those particular saved orders so that if your, your uh, colleague is on lunch or on holidays or sick, right, you can process that, process that particular order straight away at any time. To bring the order back, simply click on the customer name or on that highlighted line that I've got there. That'll bring the information back and we can see that all here up here on your screen now. To close this top half, um, just click on the little arrow in the top right hand corner there where it says collapse panel. 
and that gives you a bit more real estate to look at there with your order list. Obviously, from here, I can email this directly to my customer uh, by clicking on the email button, print it out and fax it off to them if they don't have email. I can clear the list. Obviously, we just saved it and retrieved it. I can transfer this directly to my general management system there. Uh, if I wish, I'll just say no to that for the moment. And of course, I can delete it. So by clicking delete, you'll get a message that you really want to delete this order. If you click yes, it will delete it here from your order list as well as from your saved orders uh, within there if you wish to do. All right. Now I can also, as I said, transfer this to my demo management system. So it needs to be set up. Um, and basically the way it works is when you click the transfer button here, that will send it directly to your demo management system. You'll see there's a little down arrow here. Uh, if you have a third party system that it's hooked up to, um, you could also transfer that um, to your third party um, system depending on what you've got there. In this case, it's a demo management that I've got. You'll see a message here saying mine's not running. I'll just click yes to that. And what will happen is, obviously, I don't have a deal management system, so you have to bear with me here. Just uh, sort of uh, bear with me. And on the left-hand side here would be my deal management system. So I will bring this DMS up to where I'm about to enter the part number. And instead of typing it in, it's just a matter of clicking transfer, or if it's set up as a transfer all, click transfer all, and all those parts will be automatically sent into my deal management system that quickly. So to hook up your DMS, um, probably the best way to do that is a lot of information on the landing page on how to do it, as well as our customer service division, which you can contact at any time if your DMS is not hooked up to MarketCat uh, to get through that. All right, I'll just get us out of there and we'll go back to Identify Vehicle. And let's have a quick chat about the resources that we have built into MarketCat Live V6. Now remembering, everything we need now is up here under the gear icon. Now, if I click on that little gear icon, again, we'll get the drop down. And the very first one you see here is settings. So if I go into settings, there's a couple of things in here I want to show you. Firstly, you'll come up with the general settings tab. In here, we've got our pricing display, print and email, header and footer. So your header would be your dealership, your footer would be just some message to the customer, like, thank you very much. Show or hide non applicable. Now, this one's pretty important. Remove dash when copying part number. So when you transfer your parts over to your dealer management system, you can check this particular box. And if your DMS doesn't recognize the dash in between the part number, in the part number, you can select that and it will take the dash out. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. The other tab here is personal settings. Now the thing I want to talk about in here is the default search type inside the catalog. Currently I've got mine set for description, which basically means when I identify a vehicle and get in there, my search type is set to description. Now if I'm a PNC person that knows all my PNCs off the top of my head, I might like to see PNC. So as soon as I go into that vehicle, I'm ready to type in my PNC in there um, to get it done. So this one's pretty important and a new feature that we've got in there. You can set a default um, search type in there. And of course, under general settings, remove the dash when you're copying the part number. Now let's go close that and go back up to settings. Now, also in here, we have our other information that we've talked about quite a bit in other webinars, quick reference cards, getting started guide, a help file, DMS integration guide for looking up your demo management system. But the one I want to talk about today is the video tutorials. Now, if I click on that, you'll get a window up here in the middle of the screen. Got two options here, see and learn videos or the recorded webinar. This is the one I want to let you guys know about, especially guys and girls, I should say. Click on see and learn here and another browser will open up for you. Now I'll just give that a couple of seconds to open up for you. And in here you can see that we have our see and learn videos. Um, all for a lot of franchises, but the one we want to look at today obviously is Hyundai, which is down here. Now I click on global and that will open up a viewer window. Just give it a couple of seconds to open up on your screen. In there or not, it's just taking a little while to come up. Now, the see and learn videos, uh, there are a selection of two minute videos covering such things as your um, how to search for a particular part, um, how to use uh, the graphic index um, shortcuts, all those kind of information is actually in there for you under the see and learn. 
So that's uh, having a little bit of a problem actually coming up on your screen at the moment, but that's okay. For some reason it won't overlay. So another way of doing it um, is to, again, once you do that, you'll see it actually work when you click see and learn. That'll take you into those particular videos in there. Another way of accessing some videos or some information on uh, MicroCAD Live V6 is to go into another one of our um, uh, channels. We've actually got our own YouTube channel up there now. So if I go up here and I'll just type it in for you and see if we can get in there for you so you can see it, it's this one here, youtube.com super service solution, and we'll just go in there and I'll show you what it actually looks like. Hopefully get to stop this video before it starts. In there, like that. Okay, so what you're viewing now, and you can see that on the screen, I can see that, is if we scroll down here, you'll see that we have a selection of videos for all of our products. But what we want to concentrate down here, and I'll just go to the bottom here, is our webinar recordings that we have in here, and you'll see the third one here is our MicroCAD Live V6. So the address is www.youtube.com forward slash, slash super service solutions, and that will take you into our YouTube page where you can view those videos at your leisure anytime you like. All right, that's enough from me. Thanks so much for uh, coming along to today's uh, webinar. I really appreciate it. Now I'm going to hand it back to Warren in a second and he's going to finish up the webinar. But just to reinforce that when the webinar does finish, don't touch your screen or your PC. You'll be re uh, redirected to a survey. Just take a couple of seconds to fill that survey out for us and uh, so we can get that information. Back to you, Warren. Thank you, Clay. Yep, I've just uh, changed the screen back here so I can sum up. So last chance, everyone. If you have any questions, please click on the raise hand icon or type your question in. Okay, so as Clay has uh, covered there, we have the um, support resources that are available within the, um, the product underneath the gear menu. So you can see the scene learn movies, Clay touched on the uh, YouTube channel. Now we've also recorded today's webinar. I noticed that some of you uh, were a bit delayed in coming in. You came in towards the end. So you will be able to uh, view the full recording so you won't miss out on anything today. You will be sent a link to the recording of the webinar within seven days. In the meantime, you can have a look around on the uh, CM Learn Movies and the YouTube channel. I've also got the uh, contact information for our customer service team here if you need to get in touch with anyone there.